Wood turning a segmented torus has been done quite a few times on the YouTube platform, but has anyone ever tried wood turning a pattern plywood segmented torus? If not, then this is the first, and maybe also the last. Welcome to the channel, my name is Ray, and this is Ray Whitby Creations. I believe Michael Arlm was one of the first to inspire a lot of creators to try something new with the idea of patterning plywood. And in this video, I'm using scrap birch plywood sheet to make a torus. A patterned plywood torus. Oh, and I forgot to say that I've never ever made a torus before. So I'm really learning as I go along. I'm trying to make sure I make zero mistakes. So no pressure. The first task was to cut the sheet into strips, remove the paint from the upper and lower surface, and then drum sand to ensure I got the same height of material and the same number of ply. Three strips were glued together and then offset at 45 degrees to try and maximize the amount of material being used. I did a lot of calculations trying to figure out the best possible way to make segments of patterned plywood. From my previous work on a herringbone-like pattern plywood vase, I knew that cutting segments from a long strip would waste an awful lot of material, as you simply cannot cut the next segment from the end of the previous cut, as the pattern is likely not to align. You end up having to move the piece to find the next repeat of the pattern and then make the cut. So making individual segments seemed the most appropriate way forward. And for this project, I chose diamonds for the pattern. All glue triplet were clamped and left to dry overnight. I did think about the potential shortcuts for generating this pattern, but I had to ensure that the alignment was as close as I could get it through every stage. So jumping ahead could have been a recipe for disaster. This triplet glued together forms one quarter of each segment. So it was cut at 45 degrees and I needed four of these quads per segment, eight segments per ring, 16 rings for the torus. So needed to make sure I had enough wood for cutting 512 of these quarters to make the 128 segments in order to make that one torus. I lightly sanded each quarter to remove the tool marks before gluing. Of course, this could lead to some minor discrepancies. Each quarter was paired and then the pattern aligned. I checked on both faces to ensure before I got into clamping them and leaving them to dry. And once dried, each half was then glued together into a stack of three. The stack of three was then cut at right angles to obtain half of each segment. Now, whilst only three and a half minutes have passed on the video, it took me around two weeks to get to this stage. Now, admittedly, I had been preparing another video and that went horribly wrong. And if you watch carefully in this video, you'll see the remnants of this unfortunate attempt. Uh, your clue is it's no longer being wood turned. Each half was then paired in order to form the diamond pattern. And you can see from the halves that the number of layers do not always lie parallel across the piece. And the spacing between the layers was not always even. Naturally, I could blame my tools and I would be half right to do so. The rest is down to the Egypt using the tools. To obtain eight segments into a ring, each side was cut at 22 and a half degrees. I did a very light sand in order to remove the tool marks and then did the gluing. If you ever want to avoid problems in cutting segment angles, I always recommend cutting scrap pieces that are the same size as your good wood. And this will avoid losing a lot of material. I dry fitted the segments into a ring to ensure they had been cut correctly. They were then bound together with the rubber bands and then a strip of masking tape, which actually turned out to be useful for the gluing process and the assembling of the rings. Now 
So it was useful to be able to unwind the segments into a linear strip, apply the glue, pick up one end of the tape, and then just roll those segments back into a ring. I applied a lot of rubber bands to keep pressure on the ring as the glue dried. And I have seen a lot of videos that use different approaches to gluing segmented rings. I mean, some use hose clips, others ratchet straps. And I think as long as you use some pressure, then you're less likely to see your creation come apart easily. Now, I had actually experienced this on a previous project for an open segmented helix where adjacent segments were rubbed together and just left to cure without any pressure. And it did come apart quite a few times, but thankfully not irredeemable. If you're wondering why I use such thick segments, well, join the club. It was not necessary. Once each ring was dried, it was just requiring a little light touch up on the linisher to remove the tool marks and then getting on to cutting the segments required for the torus. I'm sure some of you can imagine that when doing a pattern plywood torus, the individual rings cannot be cut along one side only. You actually have to cut on both sides so that the cuts are mirrored and the integrity of the pattern is maintained. So this process is slightly more labor intensive than when doing a standard torus with plain segments, so to speak. Anyway, here I compress the ring into a sled. I'll cut one side and then after I'll place the cut side against a 11.25 degree wedge and then cut the other side. I did take the time to ensure that on each ring the best looking pattern was facing upwards. The trouble is that I forgot that actually when looking at a torus, at least the completed version, you tend not to be looking at the periphery, you're actually looking at the face. Nonetheless, I found that when using octagons for this, um, it was much easier when cutting them into the rings needed. They had greater stability on the sled. Off camera, I had dry fitted four of the rings together and checked that the angle was at 90 degrees. If they were just a little out, I could then sand each ring evenly rather than trying just to do one ring sand it a lot. Anyway, when gluing two rings together, I had to make sure the inner and outer segments were in alignment before clamping just to ensure the continuity of the pattern. It was during this process that I realized I had a few different sized rings. I had actually cut the first 24 segments on the table saw before realizing I had some stability issues with an old Shepatch I was using. I then switched to the bandsaw. And I think if I had similar sized rings, then the alignment of the pattern would have been more faithful throughout. It was at this point I started thinking that perhaps I should have just made a couple of nice looking chopping boards. When I put together the quarter torus pieces, I also glued on some extra blocks to the outside as these would be useful anchor points for making the half torus and also assembling the final torus. Now, I'm not much of an entertainer in these videos, and I hope that some of the details I provide would actually be useful. But I think it's also good to honor previous work that's done in this area, and two YouTube videos that I saw that really helped in this project were by Kyle Toth and Andy Phillip, and I'll put links in the description below, and it's definitely well worth watching their approach. There were many more segmented torus making videos, but YouTube didn't seem to want to promote those. So please put your favorite torus making videos in the comments below. Now, when I say torus, I mean the geometric shape torus and not torus the bull. 
decided that to hand sand using a sanding board was much better than using a linisher for the final touching up of the surfaces in order to bring those both halves together to make the complete ring. It was quite a task to get this far and with what I could see as being only a series of minor mistakes so I'd just count that as a win and then we'd have to see how the final pattern turns out after the wood turning. Now I don't recommend this project if this is going to be your first time for doing a Taurus unless of course you're a little crazy and have a lot of patience. And if you've watched some of my other videos you'll know I've been improving in both aspects. I had put in a lot of effort into laying the groundwork for the basics needed for this project. But I do tend to prefer projects that have some real challenge about them. Anyway, with the torus complete, I needed to flatten one side to glue it to a support board for the initial wood turning. And thankfully I had a drum sander that could take care of this quickly. But I did need to make sure that the sanding done on top of the torus was at least parallel to the plane of the circumference. Otherwise the pattern that runs around the circumference would be majorly out of alignment and you wouldn't realise that until after you started the wood turning. So the project was rough, a little like the underwear my mum used to make me when I was younger. She made it out of sandpaper. Right, I'm using MDF for the support board to turn the torus and I was a little bit apprehensive about using it, in part for safety so I wore an FP3 filter mask throughout, um, but mostly I just wasn't convinced about the structural integrity of it when it was on the lathe with quite a weighty torus stuck to it. Of course, having a tailstock in place was reassuring, but I knew it couldn't stay there forever. I do get a lot of comments about health and safety, and I just want to reassure you that I do take it very seriously and will de-risk the project as much as I can. The issue sometimes is that the camera angle makes it look as though my fingers are much closer to the sources of danger than they actually are. I was just tentatively feeling my way through the initial shaping of the torus and I was quite surprised at how easy turning a torus was. Now this may actually be due to the use of the plywood rather than just real wood. It could also be due to the fact that I've used some fresh carbide blades on my tools. I had 3D printed a couple of green templates which were essential for checking the curvature of the torus. You need to be able to check how the curvature is developing through the turning just to make sure you're not going too far too quickly. Anyway, I needed not to have worried about the structure integrity of turning a torus on MDF. It was far more robust than I had expected. But it was just curious that it is just so soft when you're turning MDF. I mean, you never have to worry about catches, although you can scrape too deeply. When the shaping was completed for one side of the torus, it was onto dry sanding. I went from 60 grit up to 3000 grit and I know that's not totally necessary as most scratches will become invisible after say 240 grit onwards unless you're a nanotech scientist like me who will then see them for many grits beyond. Nonetheless at 3000 grit you get a wonderful shine without ever having to use a finishing material. I glued a number of MDF blocks together and attached them to a faceplate. 
This was turned on a lathe in order to get a profile that matched the whole of the torus. I'd also drilled through the center of this retainer in order that I could then bolt it through to the main turning board once that was prepared. Once I was happy with the fit of the retainer in the torus, I could then reverse mount it and then remove the excess MDF still attached to the torus. This would allow me to put the retainer into the hole of the exposed torus and then deal with the unturned side. I took a larger sheet of MDF and off camera drilled six holes into peripheral positions and then drilled a central hole whilst it was mounted on the lathe uh, and then turned a concave channel which was to perfectly match the already turned part of the torus. I could then bolt the retainer block through the aperture of the torus and hopefully it would be running true. With the profile turned, I do a quick check using one of the templates and then try fitting the torus into the channel. It was a perfectly tight fit. So there should be no wobbling or movement of the torus. I fitted the outer braces and you'll probably be noticing that the bolts are facing the business end of the wood turning and it introduces a moving metal part quite close to the hands. So I personally not risk them, and I did actually reverse them into a better direction before proceeding. Uh, using the bracing allowed me to finish the inner aperture of the torus so that the retainer block would fit neatly into position and then give me the room to finish the outer sections once the bracing had been removed. There are a number of different ways in which different wood turners have approached the whole idea of wood turning the torus. Uh, some have been a lot more creative than others, um, but just trying to figure out, yeah, a neater, quicker way of doing it would be ideal. So please let me know in the comments below. I had thought that the approach that I used would at least have had the torus running true. Unfortunately, whilst it might have been okay in theory, practice, however, was not so strict. So I ended up with a minor wobble in the alignment of the torus and I had to spend some time trying to reseat it. I just couldn't seem to get it into perfect alignment. Again, it was probably me more than the machine, so I can't really pass on the blame that way. And after all, the wobble was very minor. In wood turning the final section, there was a lot of checking and praying that the curvature did match and that I didn't end up with some grossly misshapen ovoid. Dry sanding was done exactly the same on this side as it was done on the previous side. Try and take it from 60 grit all the way up to about 3000 grit. I then spent some time working on the different sections of the front and the back using Yorkshire grit and I think that really added to the shine that I already had from the sanding. It just gave the plywood a bit more depth in contrast and colour. The process for making a segmented torus was fairly straightforward. I imagined it to be far harder than any other wood turning I'd done to date. But once you get the angles cut correctly, everything will come together. Of course, I recognize it's easier said than done. So my encouragement to you is to simply try. And now for the final Taurus. If you've made it this far in the video, well, well done. You've certainly earned the right to comment and let me know what you think of the overall effect. 
and any aspects of the approach I took. I really love the patterns that have come through and how those diamonds are subtly changed through the curvature of the torus. Of course, it's not perfect and it's easy to see the misalignments. But please let me know what you think of the project in the comments below. So please click like if you appreciated the effort that went into this project and also hit the subscribe button too. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.